Hello, crafty people. Today I am on with these hexagons again, and I was going to show you um, a week of stitching and what I've been doing with these um, English paper piecing from the video before, a couple of weeks ago. I've got this strip of hexagons, English paper pieced. I've done a border all around it. I did a dark blue on the top. I did a light blue on the bottom. That wasn't particularly on purpose. It was because um, I didn't have enough. So I just wanted to square it up. So I've squared it up, backed it onto a sort of batting that is a, is a special bag batting. So it means it's got a bit more body than the normal wadding or batting that you put in a in a quilt my first idea for this was to do like an over the shoulder bag and then i changed my mind so i follow sophie brodery on instagram and i noticed this little treasure of a bag at the bottom of one of her pages and she said that it came from aisa peak so i went to her page and saw a closer look at this bag that really caught my eye and I thought I'd just like to decorate this bag and make it into something a little bit inspired by by this I, I sapik <laughs> bag. I sapik meaning um ow it pricks it hurts. Pins, pins and needles. So here I am showing you the pom poms that I put on this first hexagon circle just got this yarn that I got from the second hand shop chopped off the pom-poms and attached them with a few stitches and then decorated that with this really big bobbin of um, really nice wool that I got also from the second hand shop that embroiders really well this is fly stitch up and down in the middle and I'm just attaching a few pearls around the outside so this is black dmc that I go around with fly stitch in the centre of this red flower thing. And then I'm pointing out this fishbone stitch. So to do this, these are the threads I've used. Bit of shiny, nice, textured, puffy type of wool. And since I'm wanting volume, this is ideal. Just not pulling it too tight so that you get that nice bit of volume still on the stitches. Obviously my bag isn't going to be like hers. This is totally different colour palette and it's a totally different style. But what I'm aiming for is texture, embroidery, fun and really just going with what I like. So I've got these two Wonderfeel bobbins for hand stitching that are really nice i have tried a few metal metallic threads haven't particularly been happy with a lot of them these are expensive but they're really nice to work with and i think i'll just try and build up my collection little by little so out of felt i cut out these green leaves and i do like this color but i was worried about the red and green being a bit too christmassy so I cut out finely in a darker colour and I thought that went better. And so then I get back on to attaching these leaves around the hexagons. So just some big stitches and then I go for... Um, uh, what's this called? Stem stitch. Point de tige. Stem stitch around it for kind of these like leafy branches. And then every time I come to it, I just put on another another leaf. So I kind of get halfway through this um, <laughs> these embroidered leaves, and then I get distracted because I know that these pearls and sequins that I really like are there and I decide that I must tip out all these sequins from the works that I bought. Isn't it mad how these little things can bring you so much pleasure? 
So this was one pound for this little sachet of sequins, but there's quite a lot of variety in all different colours in it. So take one of these fromage fray tubs that I kind of collect because <laughs> they've got a see-through top, so they're really handy for for um, just transporting things about the house if I'm working on something and also just for seeing in the top to see what's in. So look at these discs. I really like it. I mean, there's just so many little different shapes. I'm looking for something to go in between the leaves, either a pearl or some sequins. Look at this nice gaudy one. But when you put other things on top of it, it can balance out some of the colour. I don't end up using this, but you've got to keep an, an open mind, haven't you? <laughs> so there's loads of little treasures in there and I just had a really nice time. And I decided on keeping these for the hexagon lovely, lovely. bag and on some pearls for something in between these leaves. So dark colour leaves with a lighter colour metallic wonder feel thread. And I just go around attaching them like that. So once a year here we have this um, exhibition in Nantes, which is about an hour and a half from me. And you just come away having looked at all these gorgeous patchworks and these different embroideries and um, there's loads of stands selling loads of things and you just come away with your head filled with ideas and things that you want to make and and it's just really inspiring. People come from all over the world um, and so it's just an abundance of styles and something to suit everyone. So since there's lots of stalls, this is where I picked up this Wonderfeel um, thread. And I couldn't go, I missed it this year, unfortunately not. Um, but I still had a really nice time because I went to England and saw my mum and my sister, my niece and nephew. And I, so I'm just going to try and every time I go once a year, just to keep the the budget down, see what I'm using and um, get some, get some more threads. I think you always have to give yourself a chance as well to see what you actually like and what you use. And I do get a lot of things from secondhand shops, but um, some things are really worth buying new. So this is the morning of a bank holiday day, a holiday here in France. We've got loads of holidays in the month of May. So on the Thursday, I didn't go to work and I came out onto the terrace and my husband came out too and I just did a little bit of stitching and we chatted on. So this is a bit of wool that I got from the secondhand shop nice shiny blue colour and because I'm looking for texture that's fine by me and I'm doing um, another fishbone stitch which I found really hard for some reason to actually do on camera um, so I'm kind of trying to show you <laughs> basically how I did it but really you're doing one long stitch to start off with right down the stem of your leaf and then one stitch from the left to the center and then the right to the center, the left to the center, right to the center. And this is a really nice stitch for giving a leaf like effect. And after you've put this stitch on, you can add other colors and contrasts to it. So I start with this blue, I'm trying to puff it out a bit because if you pull too tight, everything just goes really flat. So I start with this blue and then I add on other colours. Um, whatever takes my fancy, really. Whatever I think looks nice. So 
So I really, really enjoy doing this bag. And I think that I rushed myself a bit because I give myself a bit of a deadline. Because there's other things that I want to do as well. So I didn't want this bag to just get kind of half done and then pushed in the cupboard. And I've got quite a few other projects on. I've got a something that's like a collective piece that, I, that I've got to do a couple of blocks for, for Thursday. So I really want to get this done and and put out the way and then use it as well. But put the stuff away after because I've just got stuff everywhere when I do this kind of thing. I'm going in with orange because I just think that looks really nice together with the blue. So I'm doing the centre stem and adding a little bit of colour and a bit more interest. But just makes such a mess because I get all my threads and different pearls and everything out. And then I don't want to put them away because I might need the same thing again to harmonise the whole thing at the end. So everything just kind of stays out. And we don't have a lot of space really for my um, all my leisure activities. <laughs> so I, I did put a time limit on myself and I just thought, you want to get it done more or less in a week. I did go over a little bit, a week and a, and a few, a couple of days. So I've been doing it on my lunch hour. I've been doing it, I had that holiday day on Thursday. I did a bit on the weekend in between doing other bits and pieces. And now I'm going in with a third colour, a darker colour this time, just that Wonderfeel black. Or it might be a, a, co a pearl cotton one maybe and just doing some low lights so putting a time limit on just made me not go too berserk with putting all sorts of things that you you'd quite like to stitch down onto it so I did it outside in the morning and then in the evening I went into my daughter's room and in between making these pom-poms cheerleader pom-poms <laughs> we also did um a bit of stitching. And then the next morning, got up, nice quiet house, high tech coffee machine that I have here. And then I got on with a little bit more stitching. So this is where I was up to. By this time, I had added some feather stitch down the sides, these little pearl hearts. And she had written I Sapik on her um, bag. And so I wanted to write something as well. I kind of had a a strong pull to, to put some lettering on. So I had some ideas that I got from the internet. Absolutely. I definitely wanted a sewing pun. Always so busy. And so it begins. And so it is. Antisocial. Are you thready for this? itching to be stitching and what's sewing on so I like them all <laughs> but I decided on something that I kind of felt was just uh you know when it just feels right and for me it was absolutely antisocial that just felt right to me so I've sewn a few things on some pearls some sequins and now I'm doing this bouillon stitch. I've decided that in the middle I'm going to try and make them something like stitch with a similar, use the same threads, try and get some sort of uniformity in the middle. And in the end I will try and balance things out by putting some pearls that I've used on one side to the other side as well, try to get a little bit more harmony than just everything kind of spread out. But I just picked out these threads that I just kind of, um, what do you call that? Didn't really steal them. <laughs> I asked my mother, could I take them from her house? And um, she kindly said, oh, go on then. So there was, they're quite thick. Um, I don't know what these are used for, but these thick um, embroidery threads. 
and I'm doing this with a needle that's probably a bit too fat. Usually this is a stitch, this bouillon stitch, you do it with like kind of a long thin needle, but this is a thick thread, so I did need a, a thicker eye to actually be doing this. And also I suffer from this terrible thing called laziness. So once I'm sitting down and doing it, there's just no way I want to get up and be getting a, another needle. So I did French knots in the middle with this kind of um, almost greeny yellow. And in the background there, you can see like a little blue pom-pom that I've put on one of the hexagons. That gets cut off because I do decide that I want these center flower pieces to be relatively similar. So I decide on three flowers on this one and do the bouillon stitch in two different colors. And I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I mean, the aim of the game is like doing it, isn't it? I think this is called rose stitch. And so at the end of the day, I had three middle hexagons to finish off. And the other flowers had been around with some pearls and some stitches. So Sunday morning, it's getting on a bit now. I need to get it finished, need to get it done. Come on, come on. So I limit myself to a shoebox full of stuff. Sit down on my my nice table that my husband made out of pallets. Literally no expense spared. And I finish off these three remaining hexagons with, a, with blue flowers. And then I'm evening it all up by putting different pearls and different stitches, threads that I might have used on one side onto the other side, things like that. Just trying to make it like a bit more cohesive, a bit more um, harmonious everywhere. And I really want to get it done by this point because um, I've got other things that are on my mind now. I have a friend who's 90 years old, but she's much more modern than me. And she was telling me that bum bags are at the height of fashion at the minute. <laughs> I think in America, they, you call them fanny packs, but in France, we call them bananas, <laughs> these banana bags. And so she was telling me that they make them in like big sizes. And as soon as she told me that in all the shops, I was seeing them. So um, she's very kindly given me a pattern for them, for these um, bigger bum bags. So the ones that you don't wear around your middle, you still wear a, like you wear like across across the body bag. That's what the name of it is. It's across the body bag and it's a XXL banana bag. And I don't know if they're everywhere in America or England and I don't know if it's other places, but I've seen them everywhere. So her granddaughter's already made one out of like false fur and another one with skeletons on or um, skulls, I think. <laughs> so I want to get making that. This is going to be my back, my back end of the bag, the other side of the bag. Going to do big bum. So these jeans are the perfect size. I did have a little bit of a palaver with the seam ripper, but it did go quite fast in the end. I just wanted to reduce the bulk and then also keep it flat, whereas it goes up in between your legs, doesn't it? So flattened it all down, made it less bulky and then stitched it to the batting thing, wadding thing for bags, the special bag wadding. So stitched it down without going over the pockets because I thought I might actually want to use the pockets so they could be functional. This is the inside material that I've chosen largely as well because it's very thin. Um, well, I like it as well. <laughs> nice colours, orange, flowers, nice. So I like it, but it's very thin and I wasn't sure how much my machine could cope with either. So no pattern for this, just sewing it around the edges, putting the squares together like so. And this is the end result. 
and I really like it. Oh, I had such a nice time. I had such a nice time doing it and I'm pleased that I did put a bit of a limit on how much time I spent on it because I think I could go on forever. I have to do another one. Really enjoyed it. And my big bum on the other side. Functional pockets. Thank you so much for watching. Like it if you've liked it and subscribe if you wanna.